Hey everyone, good evening. It's Wednesday and I hope your day is going very well. And it's hump day, we're almost there. We're almost there, you guys. Just hold on a little bit tight. Um, and the weekend is almost here, right? And so as we resume, it's been a minute, had a couple of events that prevented my sacred Wednesday, hashtag ask Melissa Wednesday. So if you are new, you're joining in and you don't know who I am, um, and this is scrolling on your newsfeed, my name is Melissa Jakes. I am CEO and founder of Rescue Event Planning, also known as Olivia Pope of Live Events. And I am here every Wednesday to bring you your questions. Ask Melissa Wednesdays. And so if you do me a favor, as I am gonna do as well, is that if you um, share, your um, comments and your questions with me. So if you would please share, 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 because sharing is caring, totally great. And so if you can do that, I am doing the same. I am about to share as well. And if you're coming in, just say, hey, let me know where you're from and um, we'll get started. So I'm sharing. <laughs> okay. And All right, cool. Done and done and done. So I hope you share as well. So if you're watching the replay, put hashtag replay so I can um, check you out, ask your questions, even if it's after the live, ask your questions because I go back anyway and answer them. So let me know. All right. So today's um, topic is what to expect when hiring an event planner. Um, and so I get a lot of questions about this and I hear a lot of people talking about it as well. Um, as they're in their search of an event planner for whatever type of event they're planning, right? And so um, one thing that you should really know about um, hiring an event planner, that there's certain expectations that as a client, you should hold as well. So most people, the uh, perception is that this event planner is going to come and save my life. <laughs> and take every, control of everything, and all I got to do is show up. That's not real. Um, and the reason why that's not real is because as an event planner, we listen to your vision, and then we take on the vision and help you get to the end goal. Um, and so, no, we're not a coach, but we help you execute the logistics, the forms, and get through some of those barriers so that you can reach your goal of your event. Right. And so some people feel like here's the vision. Here you go. Take it. And that's not realistic um, because we are not in your brain to really, you know, that's your baby. And so we're just like a nurse. We're like an RN. We're here to help you deliver your baby. But we're going to give you the, the keys and the tools to make sure you get there and you get there effectively and efficiently. But we can't deliver the baby. Only you can push the baby out. <laughs> so, right? That's the best analogy I can give. Um, and so those are some things to remember, like when you're even thinking of the process of what does the event planner do, do. And most people are like, so what exactly do you do? I tell you what I want and you do it. In a sense, yes. In a sense, no. Like you have to be a part of the process too. So I jot down a couple of things that as I have talked to different clients and different clientels and talked to other event planners um, and just had like daily conversations with other folks, really, what do we do, right? And so what should you expect? And so you should expect somebody who saves your time because time is valuable, time with your family, time is money, time for getting other projects off the ground, right? And so... Um, they help you save time. Event planners help you save time. Um, that way there is tasks that could be done. The event planner is doing that while you are working on other projects. Um, budget, budget management. 
And so this is another area where we help make sure you manage your funds as best as possible. If there are, um, I always like to have contingency in the budget because there might be things where we thought it really is going to cost this, but as you're starting to play out or your guest list grows, it's really going to cost you this. Um, and so you need to have contingencies in your budget. So they help you save time and they help manage your budget. The other thing is they prevent costly mistakes. Some people come to event planners um, for the example I'll use is like a wedding. Um, I saw somebody uh, give advice to another, um, to a newly engaged bride where they said, oh, just get a day of coordinator. That's all you need. Do all the planning and get the day of coordinator. There's nothing wrong with getting a day of coordinator. But if you are not the planner, like if you're the if you're not that bride that's really that organized, or I shouldn't say bride, if you're personally not organized and you really don't do this type of work and you're not really good at it, then having a day of coordinator is kind of too late. And so she's only going to clean up the mess that she can. But um if it started off on rocky ground, well, let's just say like quicksand, it's only but so much saving, um, he or she is gonna be able to do as the event planner. So preventing costly mistakes, I would say if you know you're not that planner, don't wait for that day of coordinator or don't try to pull in the event planner closer to the event because you're trying to save money. That's actually gonna cost you more money um, because you just don't know what people's schedule is like for the event planner. And also you don't know how much saving and work she's gonna to have to do, which can then drive up the cost of the services. So prevent those costs of mistakes by investing. I don't say that you're paying, you're investing to someone to be on this journey with you to get the objective done. So that's number three. So number one was we help you save on time because time is valuable. Um, budget, we help you do budget management, uh, prevent costly mistakes. And now the fourth one is, I gotta put my numbers next to it so I know. My fourth one is, um, we're a wealth of knowledge and experience and innovative. Um, and so I'm always looking for something different, especially when it comes to different um, events and different clients that I get. I don't like to repeat the same centerpiece when it comes to like weddings or ideas. Most brides are like, oh, I really like what you did right there and I want that. I try to twist it up just a little bit more because to me, it's like, okay, I can copy somebody else's, but why not add your own flair um, and be unique into that, right? And so wealth of experience and knowledge, you know, there are things that an event planner will know, mm, you shouldn't do that because my last event I did, that didn't quite work out. Um, and then the innovative piece comes in where I'm always looking for something new. And so my freebie for you is if you're trying to do a poll or survey, let's say at a workshop, um, let's say at a conference, usually it's going to be more of a workshop or conference, right? There is this thing, I think it's called um, Plicker or Flicker, one of those two. Either Plicker or Flicker, Google it. It is um, a printout that you can print out at home. You can laminate it. You cut it out and laminate it. It basically gives you like these different weird funky shapes. And so what you do is you ask your guests and each side has like an A, B, C, or D. So some people, there's apps, right? You can tell them to go download this app or go to this link and you can do a poll and everybody will press in. I, I, you know, I do like sushi. I don't like sushi. I like to go to Jamaica. I don't like to go to Jamaica, whatever it is, right? And so you have your polling system. So some people do apps, but I think something that's a bit more innovative and creative and that's more interactive versus on your phone, there is a, um, on Flickr, it is, you can print it out and you um, can laminate it so it's a little bit more sturdier. But basically, each side is like A, B, C, or D. And so you just turn it up, right up, upside, upside up, or right side up, whichever you want to say it. And um, the, the host, the presenter, would then scan the room with their phone, and it would tell you on the screen the percentage of how many people got it right, wrong like how many people pick a b c or d right and then on your phone it will give you like that person will show up in a red box that means no they didn't get the right answer or a green box right on your phone so that's something innovative if you're doing a conference or workshop 
And a event planner is going to bring you something that's outside the box. That's not the norm. It's not your normal workshop because you're trying to sell tickets um, when it comes to that or for your conference, right? And so you want something that's totally different as a game changer that's going to attract people to, um, to your workshop. And then when they are experiencing it, they're like, I've never seen that before. They're going to want to come back again to your workshop, your conference, because you're always thinking outside the box. You're always bringing something new that they can then use for their stuff as well. Right. And so that's what you want to do. You want to do you want to get somebody who has a wealth of knowledge and experience and who is on, um, innovative. So that's number four. All right, number five, and I talked about this um, yesterday, a skillful negotiator. You want somebody who is not going to just settle. Yep, Melissa, that's the price. The price is going to be $9.99. That's our rules. I can't bend it anymore. No, I don't stop at that. <laughs> and my husband kind of like totally hates when I do this. I go until I get the right answer that I want. And the right answer is the answer that I really, really, really like. So um, if you're saying 99.9, then you're not the vendor for me. And somebody else promised me that. So why can't you promise me that? And they have the same type of services or venue, whatever, right? I'm negotiating. I'm going to go as low. How low can you go? But still, that's, that is still giving you the best quality. Just not negotiating to negotiate. What makes sense makes sense. You know, like... Um, for the example I gave um, yesterday, the first week of October, um, now I know for sure is um, Congressional Week. No matter what year it is, the first week of October is always going to be Congressional Week in D.C. So expect your hotel um, prices per night to be in the two, three hundreds. But I negotiated that I need 100 rooms. So I'm bringing you big business. You don't have to search for the business. You don't have to compete with anybody else. I'm bringing you 100 rooms that's already prepaid. You don't have to worry about, are they going to check in? Or are they not going to check in? You're getting your check. So I need a good rate. And that's how I got it down to like 198, half of the cost of what all the other hotels are going for. So that is somebody who is going to negotiate and negotiate for you. In, in a best for your interests, right? Um, and so you want to make sure you have a skillful negotiator um, who can help you with your um, event in any type of area. It doesn't have to be hotel rooms. That can be for food. That can be venue space, whichever. Photographer. Um, I love doing it with photographers because <laughs> there's always a way to get their brand out there while working on your brand. And hey, we're helping each other out, right? So then the sixth thing is keeping you on a schedule. And this is a big one. Um, some people think that you have an event planner and he or she should keep you on the schedule. Yes, but we're all adults. And, and so if you are not that organized to keep your own self on the schedule, there's but so much the event planner is going to do. He or she's going to be able to get you up to just like this point, but you still got this more to go. And there's certain things that, the event planner can't do that in a sense if the event planner did the whole thing it wouldn't be your event anymore it would be the event planner's event so um, you still have to put some love work in it's your brand this is your event this is your thing take ownership over that be accountable for it but the event planner is going to help you push along help you get along help you really go and so that's exactly what you need right so you need somebody to keep you on the schedule and number seven, how perfect is that? Because seven is one of my favorite numbers. Um, bi-weekly meetings and updates. You should be getting bi-weekly meetings and updates with your event planner. Um, and depending on when your event is, you know, as it gets closer, that might be weekly. Um, sometimes these might be face-to-face. -face, sometimes it might be virtual. Um, what I'm trying to do and get better at is having more of my meetings um, virtual, but virtual face to face because um, you know a lot of us try to multitask, especially um, our, our those who are women. Like we, we are awesome multitaskers. But also, what uh, prevents me when I'm really trying to get work done with clients is that I'm not able to see their face, their facial reactions. I'm not able to see. Did they get occupied? Did they not really hear what I just said? Or they're just saying, mm-hmm, yep, yep, I got it. Um, and so having that 
virtual one-on-one um, -on -one so I can see if they do need to step away from the camera, then they can. Um, then I know work is really getting done and it's just not over the phone or I hear them at the grocery store, the market, people talk in the background trying to cash, cash out <laughs> at the line and it's all types of stuff going on, right? And so having those uh, meetings, but having it intentionally when you're truly focusing on your event and getting work done is the best way to do. That's how you really execute things. That's how you keep yourself on schedule. That's how you really get work done. Um, and so it is important that that happens. So I talked about seven things and we're gonna go from top to bottom again, right? What to expect, um, somebody to help you save on time, budget um, your money, your coins, prevent costly mistakes. Somebody who is a wealth of knowledge and innovative, um, a skillful negotiator, keeps you on schedule and has bi-weekly meetings. And as it gets closer to your date, most likely they'll move to weekly meetings, probably most likely face-to-face, -face. Um, really just depends. So those are things which you can expect when hiring um, an event planner. I'm totally open to your questions as well, because I know a lot of people, um, and hopefully I answered a lot of your questions already, uh, but I know there's a lot of people who might have more questions um, for me. So I'm just going to go in. Hey, Jisha. I haven't seen you in years. Oh, my gosh. Hey, girl. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Nicole. It's gonna... oh, I should actually go on my other app. So I'm going to stay on a little bit and let me know if you have questions. Can I see my own self live in this? Yes? No? Maybe, hey everyone, this is Melissa Jake here. See ya. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe you'll chose your own commercial. You're like, oh, my voice. I hate how my, how my voice sounds. Okay. All right, perfect. Yeah, so, hey guys, hey. <laughs> Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, I went over a lot, and I'm so glad I'm able to do this because um, it's it's been a minute since I've been able to actually get to, like, why an event planner, what to expect, um, because it gets a little tricky out there. And there are a lot of people who said they're event planners, and there are a lot of people who do event planning, and you may not have a great experience. So, But um, I like to put the facts on the table because it is a mutual understanding it is a mutual agreement and it is mutual work um and the event planner is not uh we're, we're really good at what we do but we're not basically saying um i should say that there are some people who will pay that premium who is like i want butterflies in the garden go and they take it on so yes there is that but that is on a very high premium <laughs> and that you have that working relationship with that client before that they know you understand their vision when you say butterflies in the garden go um not everybody has that relationship when you first work with an event planner um and and, and one and if i can add a, a bonus in a sense what to expect is expect to invest in an event planner um event planners are not um we're not too expensive, but we're not cheap. I should say that. It's an investment. Um, it is time and it's very hard work. Time, hard work. Um, and so I'm very, very particular of who I work with because I had some, I had a lot of people who may have disrespected my time. Um, and that's not fair for you, and that's not fair for me and my family, because you know, I do have a little princess who wants her mommy. Um, and wants to enjoy her mommy. And so if I am um, taking time from her, it has to be worth the time. Um, and so some people ask about pricing. Why is it this much? Why is that? Um, it's time. Time is a big thing and away from my family. And I, um, you know, that has to be kind of respected as I would do the same for any services. I'd make sure who I then 
hired to do services for myself. Um, I respect their time and I respect their value and I understand the value as an entrepreneur that gets real. <laughs> so let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll stay on a little bit longer. And if not, and if you're watching the replay, great. Put hashtag replay and then ask me your questions. Some people want to send in a DM. That's totally fine as well. So um, I will stay on a little bit longer. All right, you guys. So um, again, my name is Melissa Jakes. I am CEO and founder of Rescue Event Planning and also known as Olivia Pope of Live Events. Um, stay focused, sparkle, hashtag goals, do the right thing, and be great, be bold, be you. See you guys later. Bye.